Fleet carriers have finally been announced by Frontier after an extremely long delay. I've been privileged enough to get an early look at these ships and the new features they entail. And while I shouldn't share these details with you, I can no longer remain silent. I've decided enough is enough and it's time to finally, completely and fully step away from Elite Dangerous. Sadly, that means this will be the last you'll hear from me, but before I go, let me share with you the reasons why. As you may know, these ships cost 5 billion credits and will allow you to have 16 pads, letting you move ships around the galaxy in jumps of 500 light years. What you don't yet know are all the little issues, primarily that they will require daily upkeep, without which they will be scrapped. These will cost you an additional 1 billion credits per week, and that's just for a base level carrier. If you want any additional services, such as outfitting or a shipyard, or to enable the ability to transport your ships, that's an additional 1 billion credits, again, per week. But credits aren't all. They will require 500 various grade 4 and 5 engineering materials, once again, per week. The penalties for not keeping up with this are severe. If you don't have the necessary materials, lower grade ones will be used, much in the same way material traders work, draining all materials until empty. Once exhausted, modules will be stripped from your ships and deconstructed. Credits are similar, draining your account, then selling off stored modules and ships until your balance reaches zero, which could happen in as little as 10 days. I estimate that if you have 20 engineered ships, you'll be able to go about 15 days before everything is exhausted. Then, once you've reached zero, you'll go into debt, bringing your balance as low as negative 5 billion credits. Once you begin playing again, you'll then have to repay this debt before you can earn credits, preventing you from purchasing anything until that debt is repaid. You will, however, start with an ASP Scout instead of the Sidewinder. Carriers do, however, bring some interesting features. While you will be able to jump on your schedule, there is a significant cooldown. At base level, that cooldown is two days. However, this can be lowered to only one day, unlocking an upgraded inverse reactive frame shift drive, which I've teased before, at the equivalent cost of engineering 10 grade 5 frame shift drives. You are able to host your friends allowing them to land and use services at your station, but be careful, as if your friend's ships are on board and you go into debt, their ships will be stripped and sold to cover your costs. Fleet carriers will also allow only one ship transfer per day, E-rated outfitting, but no weapons or shields. There will also be no mission board, no restocking, no black market, and no universal cartographics. They will, however, offer ship kits and skins at a cost of 100,000 ARC for a skin and 250,000 ARC for a ship kit and several new engineers are being added to allow for various upgrades. Given these changes, I can no longer support this game nor continue to produce content for it. It's with a heavy heart that this will be my last video. Soon I'll be closing this channel and removing all videos, as on this first day of April I can no longer be a fool. This has been Commander Exegius reminding you to look at the date, fly dangerously, and thanks for watching. I hope you'll join myself, Yamix, The Pilot, Vindicator Jones, and others as we provide live commentary during the feature reveal of Carriers on April 2nd at 1800 hours UTC. Until then, I hope you've enjoyed this bit of fun and remember to fly dangerously. <laughs>